Helen Skelton, hello, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Have you had a busy morning this morning? Uh, the sun is out. Um, I feel like that's improved all of our moods. Um, and I, I just feel like that this morning should have been productive because of the sun. Absolutely. I totally agree. As soon as the sun is shining, everybody feels in a better mood. Mm -hmm. And you want to get out and about. Obviously, at the minute, our out and about is very different to how it once was. But yeah, I've got small children and an energetic dog. So every morning has to be productive. We have well, to go for a walk and get out. There we are. Um, and Helen, of course, the reason we are chatting today is the third series of On the Farm. Third series. That's mad, isn't it? I feel so overwhelmed by the support that this show's had. I mean, we were meant to make half a dozen shows last year and we've pretty much, you know, obviously we've had breaks in between, but we've been on, you know, constantly. We've had Christmas on the farm and autumn on the farm and Friday on the farm. And that's just a testament to the people that have watched. I mean, I'm really lucky that I've worked on shows that people know about, like Country File and Blue Peter and stuff. But this is different because it wasn't necessarily on people's radar before. So, yeah, I think every time I think about it and I look at my phone, the day after a show, I look at my phone and the number of messages you get from people who were getting something out of the show is just a brilliant reminder of, of why I love my job. So thank you for watching. Yeah, um, definitely. And, um, you know, when, when this series first came about, what, what, what drew you to it? Why did you want to get involved? Naturally, if they told me it was going to be on a farm, I, I, I'd just like, I'm there, straight up. <laughs> Well, I was really lucky. I grew up in rural Cumbria. My dad was a dairy farmer until very recently. My granddad was a dairy farmer. My uncle was a jockey. My mates, you know, I grew up in that kind of community of which you are very familiar in your part of the world where most people work in agriculture because that's what work is. Mm. So I was kind of the, the black sheep for, that wasn't an intentional one, but I was kind of the one that went off and found this random career in telly. So I think a lot of my life is still very connected to rural stuff. You know, my mm -hmm. dad is works in AI, so he works in artificial insemination. You say that to someone in my telly world and they think it's hilarious. You say that to someone in my social circle and they're like, what's funny about that? Like, that's yes. just farming. So, yeah, for me, it was second nature. And, you know, I think anybody who works in my industry knows they're so lucky to land on a job that doesn't feel like a job. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we laugh all the time. We have a good... Of course it's hard work it's full on you're up all night you're getting spit on by alpacas but it doesn't feel like a job so I just feel really lucky to be part of it yeah definitely and um you know I suppose on this show you get the chance to learn things as well and learn a little bit more about animals and the world uh, did that did that uh, draw you to the program I think this has definitely come along at a time when people want to know the kind of stuff we're talking about, or we hope so anyway, you know, the, the show is feel good and it's farming and it's very much about Rob and Dave at Cannon Hall. So they're, you know, they are the central part of the show and that's why it's been a success touch wood because people love them. But I think the kind of side narrative to that is that in a pandemic, on the back of Brexit, people are more interested in where their food comes from. People are, you know, looking for a bit of a celebration of British produce. And we're, you know, we're an island, of course, we're different bits of that island, but we've been able to really celebrate and shout out about people making stuff on our island. And I think people have enjoyed that. And I have to, I mean, I had no idea that you can get wasabi made in, in this country. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. I mean, I eat buckets of rhubarb, but I had no idea that Yorkshire, where I live, is was once the rhubarb triangle of the country, you know. So, yeah, it is definitely a learning curve and one I'm getting a lot out of. What would you say has been your favourite moment from filming? I, I know this is a tough question because there's probably so many highlights. Well, and I think when you work with animals... It is what it is. Like people always go, yeah. oh, never work with children, animals. And I'm like, never work with anything else. I was going to say that. And I was like, don't say it, Sam. Fight off the edge. <laughs> it's unpredictable and it's good fun. And, you know, the alpaca, there's an alpaca called Helen and she's always chewing my scripts. Um, there is a cow called Emma that moves every time I start a link. Mm -hmm. There's a donkey called Gordon on that farm who is, let's just say he is a Lothario and he is keen on- yeah, There we are. Yeah. <laughs> and everything in between. So it's, yeah, it's definitely the kind of show where there's always stuff going wrong. There's always stuff that's unpredictable and it's definitely funny. 
Do you find it hard when uh, animals are around and you're trying to do a link? I remember once we, um, I was doing a link and we had dogs uh, come, in, come into our studio and we had like three dogs at once. And obviously, you know, working on Blue Peter, you, you are aware of the complexities of having dogs in the studio. Um, but he was literally just jumping all over me. I was like, oh my God, wow. So would you say that it's quite difficult having them around? I think anybody who's been bred in children's TV like I have, if we're completely honest, we love it. Yeah. Because if you've got a, you know, not if you've got a standard link to read and you've got, you know, some words that are going to get you to the next thing that are going to tell the viewer what they need to know, that's great mm-hmm. and that's brilliant. And sometimes, you know, of course, if you're dealing with serious subject matters, then you've got to hit all those words bob on. But it's so much funnier when the animals are just like, hang on a minute, you're in my pen, you're in my field, so know your place. I mean, I love it when stuff goes wrong. I'm sure you know Steve Batchel. I've watched Steve Batchel be filmed so many times and he, I'm sure he would mind me saying, you know, he quite happily will go for the iguana that's probably going to bite him because mm-hmm. kids find that funny. And if that gets somebody's attention, then they're in, you know, and Steve, I'm using Steve as an example because he has some really, really important environmental messages. And if people's attention is caught by that iguana biting on his bicep, you know, he's got enough bicep to go around, he can handle it. Then he, he's done his job, you know, and he's brought that viewer into the yeah. important message sharing so no I love it and I suppose the other thing as well um it can almost keep you on your feet because being a presenter um you know your, your mind constantly has to be on what's next what's next what's next and it almost sort of trains you to kind of keep on your feet would, would you would you say that um working with animals and kind of working uh, with, with people in agriculture almost trains you as a presenter in a way I think yeah I mean I definitely think children's tv ha- has that element as well you know yeah predictability and do you know what it's good training for life like if we haven't learned anything from 2020 it's that we're not masters of our own destiny sometimes sometimes things are out of our control and and that is the state of god i've managed to really clutch at straws there to make that link haven't i but i feel like when you're with animals you don't know what's going to happen and you're in their world so actually it's very humbling Mm -hmm. like you know you can say we're going to do a link here we're going to have all these cows looking this way they aren't doing that I guarantee you those cows are showing their backsides and no one needs to see that at 8pm on a Thursday night. So <laughs> I, I feel like it's humbling and it's grounding and it makes you be adaptable, which yes. is a brilliant skill for every bit of life, not just telly. Definitely. And uh, what, what, what else can we expect on the rest of the series then, Helen? What, can, what What's coming up? More fun, more... It's very tongue-in-cheek, you know, there's some quite cheeky bits. We see Rob and Dave, I think, you know, I've said it before, but Rob and Dave are really central to that show and people love them. So we kind of explore a bit more of their history and their family. And we've got a lot of celebratory stuff, kind of jumping off to get around the UK to, to celebrate some brilliant British producers. You know, I had no idea about the European cheeses that you could get made here very close to us, no food miles, et cetera, et cetera, employing local people. So there's a lot of celebration, which I'm really proud of. Amazing. Um, well, Helen, uh, congratulations on the show. As I said, as somebody who aspires to do more presented, uh, you're a bit of an inspiration to me. Uh, so, Helen, thank you so much for having a chat with me. I'm glad I'm in my own kitchen. My head's so big now. I never would have got out of the studio. <laughs> there we thank are. You. Thank you, Helen. Lovely to talk to you. Good luck with it. Thank you, Helen.